Hello, Chris Godina, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon, and then I post these videos up to Patreon and other places when I get the chance. Ah, oh, this video is for educational and informational purposes only. The views and opinions stated herein are mine and mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other therapist for that matter. Boom shakalaka done. I'd like to thank my sponsor, BetterHelp. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. They're an online therapy company. They're international. They're everywhere. They've got 40,000 therapists working for them. I've had fantastic feedback from people using them. I'm very pleased. So thank you, BetterHelp dot com slash Chris Godinas. Okay, on to today's question. So today's question was, um, do narcissists pull the nice guy routine and take over other people's events? So even like funerals or weddings or births or birthdays or anniversaries or whatever. The answer to that is a resounding, oh, hell yeah. Have you been paying attention to this channel? What the? Seriously, no, they do. They absolutely do. They, <laughs> wow. So narcissists absolutely have to be the center of attention at all times. It is so stupid. And they will do one of two things when somebody has an event that is not necessarily about them. So one is they'll cause drama, right? They'll like march in and, you know, throw fit have a medical event, uh, the medical Hoover, that kind of thing. Um, uh, have some sort of meltdown, start an argument with somebody. Oh my Lord. Or conversely, they'll do the nice guy act and they'll take over. Like I've seen, Oh my gosh. I've been to weddings where, you know, you know how they have the open mic for when you give toasts. And sometimes these narcissists give these toasts and you're just like, Please sit down. This is not about you. Shut the hell up. Seriously, right? So like they'll give inappropriate toasts and just try to monopolize as much time as they possibly can. Um, birthdays, they'll ruin the birthdays. They'll they'll make, uh, and I think I discussed this um, with somebody on, somebody asked a question in the chat and I, I think I responded to them, but They'll make birthday plans with somebody and then cancel at the very last minute and do this consistently. And it's like, well, why do they do that? Well, <clears throat> for two reasons. One, they want to know that you still want to hang out with them, number one. And number two, it's a power and control thing. So if you make plans with them and they cancel, well, now what are you going to do? You know, again, you're going to be thinking about them. The narcissist's whole goal is to have you thinking about them all the time whether they're there or not. I've also seen clergy, okay, because remember, narcissists are attracted to positions of power. I've also seen clergy use a funeral or a wedding as an opportunity to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They turned it into a sermon and, and not necessarily a really good sermon. You know, it's like at a, at a funeral, people want to be comforted. That's, that's why we do funerals. Seriously, funerals are not for the dead. Funerals are for the living. And so the whole point of having a funeral is for everyone to come together and go, yes, we are, we've lost this person. This person has died. We are grieving. We need comfort. And the part that the pastor should be playing is to lead the flock and comfort them. I have seen some narcissistic pastors just turn it into a hellfire and brimstone. And I'm sitting here going, now is not the time. Read the room. Literally, Jesus H. Montgomery, what the hell, you know? So I, <laughs> I've also seen them do that at, at weddings, too. And, you know, I can see the guests get really uncomfortable and look at each other. And it's like, just perform the ceremony, sit down, and shut up. But they don't want to. They're, they're narcissists, right? It has to be about them. It has to be focused on them. So, um, yes, a hundred percent in answer to your question. I've also seen narcissists become the chief mourner. Okay. So there's a funeral happening. This person dies and this other person that had nothing to do with them, or maybe it's an ex, right? Oh, <laughs> I could tell stories. So, um, yeah, maybe, it, maybe it's an ex, maybe it's a disordered ex. The person dies, the ex finds out, shows up at the funeral, throws themselves on the casket, even though they'd been divorced for 40 years. What? Yes, they do do that. I have seen that. It's crazy. 
Okay. So yes, they will become the chief mourner at a funeral, even though they weren't close to the person or haven't seen them in 40 years or don't really know them or whatever. Again, all eyes on them. Or if there's an anniversary or a wedding or, uh, you know, something, it has to be their focus. They'll do something outrageous and egregious to get that attention. So yeah, basically what you want to do is you want to not have these people involved. Seriously, don't invite them. Do not. Do not. So let me give you an example. So my dad and his ex, <laughs> two very disordered people, were constantly sending each other mail back and forth, back and forth, condemning each other for how horrible the other one was and how they messed up their kids and da 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 da, and they never stopped. It was tit for tat, and they could not, would not, you could make them, wild horses couldn't drag them to stop. Seriously. They, they, they continued this up until the week he died. And so when he died, us kids got together and we were like, yeah, we're not inviting his ex to the funeral. I don't need it. I don't, I don't, I've got enough baggage with him being dead and processing the love hate relationship. I don't need to deal with his ex doing something stupid. Thank you very much. So we just didn't invite him. We didn't invite him. They hated each other. Why would you invite somebody who hated somebody? I mean, I hated him too. Jeez Louise, join the crowd. Foo, stand in line. But the point being, why would you invite somebody that you knew was drama? Why would you do that? You, you no, know, you don't do that. So a lot of people, when I tell them that, that you don't have to invite narcissists to things, they go, oh my God, but, 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 mm -mm, you, you, you have the power. You, you have the power. You do. You don't have to invite them. Are they not going to like it? Yeah, they're not going to like it. Are they going to smear and do and, you know, have a little hissy fit and throw themselves on the ground and, and, and spit and everything else? Yeah, they are. Uh-huh. hundred percent. So what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And you especially don't want them around to ruin your birthday, your anniversary, your wedding, your birth of a new child. You know, I've seen, oh Lord have mercy. I have seen these narcissistic mother-in-laws that when the grandbaby is born suddenly decides that <laughs> the daughter-in-law is not a good enough mother and that they need to raise the child and they try to push the daughter-in-law out holy mother of what they actual seriously so yes they will ruin beautiful things if you have somebody that's a narcissist in your life, do not have them at your wedding. I can guarantee you they'll start a fight with somebody. So let me give you a great example. So, and, and I don't know how much of this was narcissism and how much of this was um, the fact that this man was just an absolute raging alcoholic. And I do mean raging. So we had a family member and every time we had a get together, this man, and I use the term loosely because he was a total coward, would start an argument with somebody. He would be three sheets to the wind and he would try to ruin the good feelings because everybody else in the family, okay, people, I'm talking here, go away. Everybody else in the family um, got along and everybody was enjoying each other's company and we were talking to each other and it was fun and it was good. And here comes this raging alcoholic, probably a narcissist, who would start, and if it didn't, if it didn't work with one person, he'd go to the next and he'd try to start something with that person. If it didn't start with that person, he'd go to the next person. And eventually the brothers would get together and literally carry this guy home. And I'm just like, why did we invite him? Why is this person here? Cause he does this every single time. It's like, I can set my watch by it. So anyway, yes. In a long answer, yes, they absolutely will, um, take over an event, whether it's a funeral, they'll become the chief mourner or whether it's a wedding or whether it's uh, an anniversary or a birthday or a dinner get together or a birth of a child. Yes. Narcissists at all times must be the center of all eyes. All eyes must be on them. So the way to avoid that is you don't invite them. Seriously. You don't. Now, is there going to be blowback? You bet. But here's the deal. Part of growth, part of healing, part of moving on past having been a target of abuse is you stand up for you and the people you love. 
You do not allow an abuser to abuse. You do not allow them to ruin a kid's birthday party or a birth or a wedding or a funeral or whatever. So what I suggest is you have people in on what's going on. You tell them, point blank, you tell them. I told all of my grooms people, you know, my groomsmen and my bridesmaids, point blank. I said, if anyone starts something, they are to be escorted out. Feel free to call the police. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I am not playing. So, um, yeah, you just, <laughs> you let people know you have a plan. First of all, you don't invite them. If you do feel you need to invite them, assign somebody to them to keep them distracted. If a narcissist has somebody that's fawning all over them, they'll probably drop their plan to throw themselves on the casket. Seriously. Because... They've got, oh, they're getting all of this lovely narcissistic supply. So if you know you've got somebody coming to a family event, a wedding, a funeral, a birth, a, you know, something, you, you assign someone to distract them, seriously. So, and that usually handles it because now they're getting all that lovely narcissistic supply and nobody's getting hurt. And that's wonderful. The best way to do it, though, is to just not invite them. Just don't invite them. Don't have them around. But yes, they will absolutely, if given the opportunity, they will absolutely commandeer the center stage. So, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get married or if you're gonna have a funeral, you need to have a real strong talk with the pastor ahead of time and be like, this is not the time for sermons. If you're gonna give a sermon, give it on love. Give it on comfort. Give it on the beautiful afterlife. Give it on, you know, give it, do you see where I'm going with that? So, and if they can't do that, if they're unwilling to do that, then don't have them be your, your pastor. It's simple as that. So anyway, there's that. All right, my loves, you guys have a great week. Uh, this week on Sunday, I'm going to be talking about neurodivergent, ADD, ADHD, OCD. Is there anything else? My brain has just left the building. Oh my gosh. Anyway, because that is what seems to be up for a lot of my clients that have been targets of abuse because narcissists like to attack people they think they can easily manipulate. And unfortunately, when somebody is neurodivergent or has ADHD or OCD or depression or anxiety, boy, howdy, the narcissist learns how to play them like a fine-tuned Stradivarius. So we got to talk about all of that, how to help yourself, what to do. There's, you know, I know people don't like going on pharmaceuticals, but in some cases, oh my gosh, it has made all of the difference in the world. So don't just, no, 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 I don't want to do it. Do you think about it, talk about it, research it, you know, look into it, talk to your doctor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to talk more about that and what those signs and symptoms are. Um, executive dysfunction. That was the other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, and how that impacts targets of abuse, especially when they go to go into court. Because, oh my, you want to talk about a triggering situation? Holy cow, court will do that to even the calmest and coolest of us. So anyway, that's what we'll be talking about. All right, you guys have a great week and I will see you on Sunday.